Wakey Wakey, Eggs and Bakey. Welcome back to another episode of PM in the AM podcast. I'm your host, Blake Bushman, joined by my uh, my subordinate there, Porter McNeely. Uh. And each week, we strive to bring you a half hour of humor going through things we found online, whether that's making a bracket out of the worst uh, cartoon characters that would be in a fight, or giving you tips on white elephants, because that's what's coming up on this week's episode, and I am looking forward to it. But first, before we get into anything, I gotta ask the man himself, Porter, how are you doing? I mean, I couldn't be pleased with the way that intro went after you started by calling me a subordinate, and then you tried to carry on and assuming (laughs) that I would forget what I was called. Uh, I didn't forget, and uh, usually... If you've listened before, I always say, you know, great compliments about Blake when I'm introducing him when it's my turn and to mm-hmm. be called subordinate. I mean, uh, that was pretty savage. That was a Listen, pretty rude way to start off this Christmas season. We we know that uh, I go into those intros with absolutely zero plan. I am just flying. Oh, really? Flying. Yeah, if you couldn't tell. I am <laughs> flying and just hoping that the words come to be like, I'm that that. Uh, that scene with michael scott where he's just like sometimes i start a sentence and i don't even know where it's going i just hope i find it somewhere along the way that's me i mean basically every time i talk but really really mainly on the intro i have no idea what i'm supposed to say i have no idea after i say wakey wakey eggs and bakey it's just it's a full-on tumbling down the hill and i think i landed it really now if if nothing else from this podcast i think that's the one skill that i've generated is that I can start talking and I don't know what I'm talking about. But while I'm talking about whatever the heck is coming out of my mouth, I think about a logical way to like end the sentence or paragraph or whatever. And so the person that I'm talking to is like, oh, okay, yeah, that, that point all made sense. But at the beginning, I just started talking, hoping I would yeah. find out where I was going to. <laughs> and you call up a subordinate somewhere in the middle and uh, uh. <laughs> you just hope they forget it by the time you get to the other side. No, I generally, yeah, I try to avoid uh, ruffling feathers. Um, Mm. But yeah, I mean, like I said, kind of a rude way to start off this Christmas season. Uh, As you can see, I got my nice Christmas background going on. Um, And and yeah, we're really excited. Like Blake mentioned, we have white elephant gift suggestions coming for you. You know, that's one of my personal favorite Christmas traditions is just wrapping up absolute garbage and uh, passing it around while everybody's laughing and enjoying Meanwhile, you're throwing out something uh, that you don't even care for. So, <laughs> it, Yeah, it's really important to me, white elephants. Everybody does them a little bit different. And if you're not familiar with the term white elephant, it has a million different names that we're not going to get into. But it's the whole thing where you each bring like a cheap little gift that's hopefully something really stupid that nobody wants. And, uh, you know, you do some sort of game or something where everybody ends up with a random gift. And most of the time, they should be garbage. And that's what we, Oh yeah. our goal, my goal today is, you know, I think I got actually some really high quality gifts, but I mean, the whole point is that these are supposed to be cheap, stupid, and things that nobody wants. And so if you need some ideas for this season, you know, got parties coming up, stay tuned because I don't know what Porter has, but I think we got some, something real special coming up. And I'm trying not to laugh right now because I saw Blake's list so I can, uh, <laughs> tell you all that that is not the case his gifts are not useful and uh probably not helpful but we'll get into that a little bit later uh before we do blake i gotta bring up an issue that i think needs to be resolved an issue that i first you know came to my attention uh from a you know fellow podcast that we follow on instagram uh the 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 account's good time content and i believe the host of that show his name is wyatt and i saw a video clip that he put out so i mean shout out to him for this bringing this to my attention uh he was talking about the fact that airplanes you know when they have the in-flight entertainment they offer way too broad of a variety of entertainment they offer movies with people getting their arms, legs, limbs just blown right off of their bodies. And there is absolutely no excuse for why they are showing these on planes. And so I just had to had to get that off my chest because mm-hmm. the last time I was flying, the person in front of me to the left was watching a, a Christmas show called Violent Night. 
Are you aware of this movie, Blake? <laughs> I have never seen it, but I, I, I have heard it. Yeah, it has the guy from Stranger <laughs> Things, and it's basically Santa, Santa, like these people that are being attacked, and he has to go in and like murder a bunch of people. Is that? It's absolutely brutal. <laughs> like, it is so gory, so brutal. There was so much blood. There was so much death. And it was insane. And this lady is like sitting next to a small child. I'm, why in the world is that one of the options on the on the flight? You know what I mean? Like, we have to change that. That should not be allowed. That that child is probably going to a mall somewhere, you know, to sit on Santa's lap to get a nice peppermint candy cane, and uh, it's gonna ask him like, "Hey, are, are you okay? I mean, I I saw your show. Is everything going all right, Mister Claus?" Yeah, I got, I got two thoughts with this one because I absolutely stand with you on the fact that there's been times that, you know how you're watching a show and then all of a sudden in the middle of nowhere, there's a certain, a scene comes up that's that's uh, spicy in nature. You know, it's got two <laughs> people who are um, getting intimate, as we'll say, a family-friendly podcast here. That, I mean, it comes up out of nowhere. It's in like 90% of the things now, randomly just like thrown in. And there's been times on airplanes where I'll be sitting there, one of those scenes will come up and I'm like the amount of shame that I feel because I'm worried that somebody's not going to have seen what I'm watching. They're just going to look over in that moment and uh, they're just going to think that I'm just sitting on the plane, just watching some questionable content. But so, this guy is an absolute scumbag. Yeah. And it, this happened recently with, uh, I was on a long flight. I didn't have anything that I had downloaded. So I was watching the, the, movies that were available i don't even remember what i was watching but oh, sure a, i'm a, sure you don't a certain scene came up on one of these and uh, i am not giving a free movie shout out here i actually don't remember what it was but uh i was so worried that somebody was going to look over and just absolutely tear me apart they would have never idea no idea who i am would never see me again but in my soul i would know my other issue that i think they need to get rid of is there's a lot of uh, plane movies that are allowed on planes. I think if it has a plane that's being like attacked, then we should <laughs> <laughs> that should be on the ban list. Get get uh, m- bun- murder movies, uh, intimate movies, and then anything that takes place on a plane. They're like, you know what? Let's not include include that. Like, I don't want to watch a, a 9-11 documentary while I'm on a plane. All right, I'm good. I don't need that. Isn't there? I think there's one with Denzel Washington, or there's another. There's another one with. I have no idea, but I think that's about or or the one with uh, Tom Hanks where the plane goes down into the river or something like that. I think I'm all for that. Make the journey more intense. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) if you want to really be living it. (laughs) <laughs> they got to sync it up. You know, when you go to like uh, Disneyland or something, they have the movie theaters or the screens that like oh, the yeah. chairs react and vibrate depending on what's happening. In the movie. They got to figure out a way to sync it up with whatever's happening in the movie. The plane kind of just, you know, it really intense part. Let's have some turbulence going on. Oh. Dude, I've got to, I've got to tell you, if, have you ever been to a movie theater with uh, the D box seats? That's, that's what you're describing, but have you ever had that opportunity? I have not. No, I mean, I guess. I mean, does do you count the Bugs Life thing at Disneyland? Because I have done that. I mean, is that the that's same? That's similar, <laughs> except for at D Box, you don't feel anything crawl across your back. Uh, when we did go to the the uh, Disney World, and that happened, it did catch me off guard still. But you have to go watch an action movie at in the theaters in oh. D Box because you feel like you're driving the car down the streets. You're going back and forth, and. I mean, we went to Creed too. We went to Creed, and we were getting punched in the seat, like boom, boom, <laughs> boom. Every time it punched, it was an amazing experience. You know, you're. I'm just imagining the, James. There's little little arms that come out of the chair, and with every punch, it just it just starts hitting you in the face. <laughs> no, fortunately, we are not taking sucker punches to the face or kidneys or anything like that. But it does enhance the experience. So I mean, yeah, I got I, I got to recommend that to everybody that you go try D box uh, seats, no matter what movie you're seeing. I do am, they offer uh, them in like fan. regular regular movie theaters? Is that there's usually like to... one row, but if you go on the Tuesday, it's still the same price as the the regular seats. So that's I'm, uh, I'm gonna have to look into this, and then I'm just gonna go waste it on something like a Disney movie. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> we went to the first one we saw was Uncharted. 
with uh, Tom Holland. Terrible movie, but very enjoyable in the D-Box. So, I mean, uh, 10 out right, of 10 I'll, recommend that. We'll have to give it a whirl there. Shout out to, to D-Box, apparently. But I do think, like, tying this all back together, if a first-class seat had D-Box... I would be uh Ooh, I would be see, more enticed interesting. to waste a thousand dollars on a two hour flight or whatever the heck they charge for first class. <laughs> that that makes things a lot more interesting. Cause yeah, I mean to me, you know, like I'll be uncomfortable for even a long flight if it's a ten hour flight, let's say, and now I'm a little uncomfortable, my my knees are on the other side of my head, like whatever. But if I'm able to enhance my viewing experience for ten hours, now we're getting so you know how many movies I'd be cranking out? I would. It would just be on. I'd be like, "Hey, pull up your most intense intense action scene here. Hit some turbulence. <laughs> let's let's really get this thing moving." Oof. Oh, that's a good point. It definitely would enhance the experience. I guess maybe turbulence could do that naturally. Luckily, I've been fortunate to not have to experience uh, too much of that in my in my time flying. But yeah, you, definitely. Ha- have you ever seen a video of anybody that's like in some real turbulence on the plane? Yeah, I've seen a video where people are seated normal and they hit like a pocket of air. Or I don't, do you even know what turbulence is? Because I don't. But anyway, they not wearing it's their a really big bird landing on the plane. Okay, that was that was a terrible take. It's got to be something to do with science, <laughs> at least. Uh, but anyway, these people are just seated. You know, they're the people that just leave their seatbelts undone. Boom, head hits the top of the plane. That's how far up they went. <laughs> My my favorite is when you watch the videos, and there's even like skits on this now where they hit really bad turbulence, and it's like, oh, we're we're gonna die, we're going down. Everybody starts freaking out, and then like just a few minutes later, it's all calm and fine. And I have to, I just have to sit there and think that like that'd be pretty embarrassing if, if you were just like sobbing, True. and then five minutes later it was just like, oh hey, by the way, we're cool, no worries. I think I. I think I have told you about that experience before when I was uh, flying in. I thought I was going to die. I think you have, yeah. I don't know if you shared it on the podcast, but yeah, it, it happens. It's, it, you definitely hit the ground, and you're just like, well, that <laughs> happened. But yeah, I mean, there's people like kind of screaming in that plane, kind of a, a little emotional. And then as soon as you hit the ground, I think on that, on that flight, people did clap, I do believe, uh, which I know is usually a frowned upon behavior, but... Uh, yeah. If you would have seen the circumstances, they definitely deserved a standing ovation, round of applause. Uh, there, was, there was a lot of gusto behind those claps on that day. But yeah, I definitely, yeah, I'm definitely not a believer in Violent Night, the movie. Not recommending it. It's <laughs> one of those things. That's how they started. Was with <laughs> I had Violent to tie Night. it in. <laughs> oh, I told man. you I can ramble. But <laughs> it's like one of those things. Like if somebody's watching something like that, you're your vision is just going to like automatically like kind of linger over there. And I hated it. Just watching Santa Claus get stabbed. Like that was brutal. There was no yeah. reason that movie should have ever been made. And then the, per- the psychopath of Delta that was like, sign me up, put this on our flight entertainment. It's almost Christmas. I, and that, that person deserves to be fired. <laughs> I'm just waiting for like a little kid just flipping through the channels. Doesn't know like, he doesn't really even know how to read, but he sees Santa Claus. And he's like, exactly. oh, I love Santa. <laughs> I want to watch this movie. <laughs> and then it's a, just a crime scene the whole way through. I guarantee it has happened. And that yeah, that's why I'm standing up against it. That's why I'm starting mm-hmm. this petition to uh, change the way we have in-flight entertainment going forward. But... I'm glad you let me get that off my chest, Blake. That's something that's been bothering me ever since. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting into some white elephants. So let me go ahead and share my screen. And I believe your white elephant selections are going to be up first. So let's let's take a look what we got here. All right, so I'm going to start off here with something really special. And this actually was sent to me, so shout out to our listeners always uh, sending us stuff. We appreciate it. But I saw this, and I knew I had to share it. Because this is, I mean, it says it right there. It's a perfect stocking stuffer. Stocking stuffer, excuse me. And it is uh, petrified dinosaur poop. I don't know if you ever went to the local dinosaur museum that's near where we're at. But I remember, as a little kid, I don't remember anything else about that museum. Other than the fact there was a six foot long dinosaur turd 
And I thought that was the coolest thing because I imagined that trying to go down a human toilet and just clogging the entire thing. I don't know if you ever went to the local dinosaur museum that's near where we're at, but I remember as a little kid, I don't remember anything else about that museum other than the fact there was a six foot long dinosaur turd. And I thought that was the coolest thing because I imagined that trying to go down a human toilet and just clogging the entire thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you brought this up because this was my next point is I've seen that and looking at the size of these and the fact that they're only 10 bucks, I have to believe these are pretty small. And I'm almost certain that this is not dinosaur poop. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. It's, in the yeah, description the... says petrified dinosaur poop. First of all, I don't think you can get it for 10 bucks. I think that something that's millions of years old is going to be more than 10 bucks, regardless of the size. And also, I don't think anything that small came out of a dinosaur, unless we're talking like the little itty baby ones, but those don't even count as dinosaurs. But bro, so like lizards. Also, why, why are the paper towels having like residue on them? That's a little sketchy mm, wow. because it definitely shouldn't be wet. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. These things are, this is just dog turds that they got out of the yard oh. and then they, they like hardened them up and then sprinkled them with like sand to try to get them to look oh old. Oh my. Uh, yeah, that's dinosaur if, if, diarrhea if it's actually anything. <laughs> I think it would make a great white elephant that's, though. That is an exceptional idea. I can't even imagine, you know, opening it up and you're like, is it a rock? No. It's actually poop. <laughs> Give it a taste. See what you think. <laughs> yeah, if you fossilize your own, that's definitely bonus points in terms no, yeah, of... Yeah, if, if you can find a way to petrify your own poop, I mean, that's that's fun. I've had a few that I wish I could have. Uh, oh, my That's gosh. for sure. So if, you, if anybody figures that out, I, I'm going to start storing them for the perfect white elephant gift whenever I need them. Yikes. Everybody steer clear of Blake's house. Are you ready to move on to your second one? Let's do it. I'm excited about this one. Because this this is one that uh, what in I've, the world? I've wanted oh my. I've wanted to do myself. Uh, I, I've seen this Ugh. a few times, and people make a shave with me Barbie. So what, what I would do uh, if this were me, I would buy a Barbie, and then I would trim off some of my own hair. You can choose where that comes from, whether that's head. Uh, I got a beard, so maybe I'm trimming that up, and I can throw that on there. Um, you know, for the ladies, if you're shaving your legs, and you can somehow capture that, find a way to get some hair and glue it onto a Barbie. And that's a shave with me Barbie. Bonus points if it's your own hair, because I think that that makes it way better. If you need to though, I'm sure you can you can uh, go to somebody's house that has a dog and just like put some glue on it and roll it around on the couch or something. Uh, you could just roll it around in our carpet, dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that thing would be covered. But that is an absolutely horrific idea. And the thing that I was thinking about as you're saying that is you've heard of this before, yeah, so this admittedly wasn't my own idea. I just in the past, I think I saw one of these pop up and I was like, oh, I mean, I didn't make these in the picture uh, if you're watching the video. So, yeah, I I don't know whose idea this was originally. Shout out to them because it's a fantastic idea. I don't know if it was intended for a white elephant or not, um, but I think it's a, it's a great white elephant regardless. Yeah, that's absolutely disgusting. <laughs> And, Perfect for uh, those people who are going through puberty and, and are starting to shave. <laughs> Get them a Barbie. They can shave with them. These ones come with a little itty-bitty razor there. I think that's a nice touch. Uh, definitely a nice touch. Definitely ties the gift together. So, you know, props props for this one as well, Blake. I think you did really good. <laughs> All right, my last one. <laughs> <laughs> that's if you're beautiful. Seeing the video, if you're seeing the video, you already know the beauty. But uh, if you're not, let me describe it to you. If you're familiar with the uh, famous painting Starry Night, now imagine in the middle of that, there's a shirtless Danny DeVito holding what I don't, I mean, it looks like. It looks like a ham. Yeah, I was going to say, it looks like a ham. <laughs> it's some cold cuts. <laughs> is this yeah. uh, is it, Jersey uh, Mike's commercial? <laughs> <laughs> Wherever this came from, this was fantastic. Danny DeVito holding a, a, a ham in the, the starry night painting and it is listed for 10 bucks which i think is an absolute steal uh it's perfect for white elephants they're usually like cheap budget items and uh, if you show up with one of these it's gonna be a hit i think that's gonna be one that people start to fight over you know that's gonna be one oh, that yeah. passes around multiple steals because it's it's definitely funny and it's not gruesome like 
body hair on a Barbie, um, so or uh, <laughs> petrified poop that somehow it is gruesome, into like the shirtless Danny DeVito. But that's <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I think him holding up the ham just ties it all all in. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, touch. shout out to the artist who did that because they recreated the Starry Night very well. So yeah, I should I should have included their name. I don't remember it. I just took a screenshot of it when I saw this, but uh, look it up on uh, Facebook Marketplace. You'll find it. Ten bucks. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that was great, Blake. All right, let me take a crack at it. I've got three as well, so let's get right into those. And first and foremost, we have the iPod Nano from 2004, the one that's like an inch thick. That's it's got a thousand thing. songs and working, and it has a case. I just, you know. I'm surprised you could get a thousand songs on those things. I mean, this is it says 20 gigs, which... In today's standards, is is pretty small, all things considered. So, uh, I, I mean, that's come true. a long ways. But I just, I mean, I think that'd be pretty funny. You know, it's like an old piece of history. You know, maybe you, you go even deeper and you get the Palm Pilot. Do you remember those things? Ooh, oh, yeah, that that was the OG. That was be- that came out before <laughs> uh, the iPod, right? I mean, that was. I think that was like computers and then Palm Pilot. Like, yeah, that was that, the that first. Was- that was right there. Device. Revolutionized technology right there at the Palm Pilot. If you can find one of those, that's that's a legit Christmas present. That's not, you know, that's not even a white <laughs> elephant. That's something that somebody's gonna want that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just imagine like pulling this iPod out though, and you just you're flipping through your songs. Somebody's like, How did you even find it? that thing's twenty years old at this point? Palm pilot's like thirty years old, so yeah. You right. are going to have to give them uh, corded headphones, though. I know those are a little bit harder to come by nowadays, but uh, this thing... Did the volume not come out of the bottom of this one? I swear I, that you could just no. crank the volume and mm-hmm. no no speaker. No, I had the newer Dang. version of the, of the iPod uh, mm-hmm. Nano and no volume. No, no headphones does not do anything, so you better You, you know you what you need get to get? Some. The iHome. And you just dock that oh, thing yeah. right in your eye home. Everybody had an eye home back uh-huh. in the day. You that got. Was, that I was, think you, that was everything. That was your alarm. That was your speaker. That was. That was yeah. great. <laughs> that yeah, true. All right, that that definitely wasn't my best work, but for some reason I was just like, I feel like that'd be a good gift. Like somebody would open that up, and it'd be a good time. All right, next we got a grocery store lobster. <laughs> for this gift. I want you to get a real life lobster living at the grocery store and uh, find a way to keep it alive until the time of the gift. What? And I took some Photoshop liberties. What grocery store are you going to that has lobsters? You've never seen a lobster tank at a grocery store? Not a single time in my life. What kind of bougie... That's fake. Bougie gas... Or not gas... Bougie freaking grocery store are you going to that they have live lobsters? Well, in this picture, it's a Sam's Club. That I'm pretty sure. No, do you remember no the shot. Albertsons? There used to be an Albertsons. I, I, where, yeah, I, I lived five minutes from Albertsons. And I, I went there as a kid, and I would stand in front of the lobster tank for five minutes and watch them swim around. So that's how I know mm, there are never, still well, not a single. St- you oh. went to you went to Red Lobster, and we're doing that. They there is a zero no. percent chance, dude. No shot. I. I I don't know who has like the seafood things now, but if you go, I bet if you go to like a Harmon's or a nicer end grocery store, you're going to see the lobster tank. They are alive. I, they're swimming around and you point and pick. In my and, 25 years of life, I've never seen this, but I will make a concerted effort next time I go to a, a grocery store to see if they have an aquarium hidden somewhere. That is I've a never sad seen life. <laughs> I've never seen that it. That is a very sad life. But I'll try. I cannot believe I mean, you have never seen the grocery store lobster. They got the thick elastic bands around their claws. I even I took some liberties to do some Photoshop on this picture. If you're watching the video, you're gonna see some delightful yellow bows because I wanted to show you how to wrap the lobster. Mm, you want to I mean, keep injuries, nice, yeah. you know, people away from getting injured and stuff. So make sure you put some bows on the claws. And then I just thought the kid in the picture looked like the Grinch, so I put that that <laughs> picture <laughs> next to him as well. <laughs> but I I don't can you shouldn't be able to deny that getting a, a live lobster oh, that would be epic. That's fantastic. I mean, <laughs> sensational. If you, 
I don't even really care if it dies halfway through. If I open up a white elephant and there's a legit lobster inside, that's that's a 10 out of 10 for me. So, uh, yeah, great choice. If you can find a grocery store that has an aquarium hidden in the back, great move. They exist. They totally <laughs> exist. You're just shopping at the wrong place. All right, last but not least, we have a, a homemade SpongeBob costume that is... Absolute nightmare fuel. So you're going to definitely want to check out the uh, video for this one. You know, this this costume leaves something to be desired in the uh, looks department. It does not really look like SpongeBob that much. Uh, and That much? You, it looks like something out of a horror film. That's it what looks I was like say. SpongeBob <laughs> if he got hit by a bus. <laughs> exactly. So this I, is... That, this is the we got SpongeBob at home. That's the, yeah, that's what that's this the, is. This isn't even the Walmart version of SpongeBob. This is uh, the Dollar General version of SpongeBob. This is when you order SpongeBob off a of Wish. I mean, this uh, is, and then and you can see on here they were initially. This is a Facebook Marketplace thing. I'm sure you could uh, have them ship it to you. They were trying to get seventy five dollars for this. It is now showing forty five dollars. Um, so yeah. as you can and see, it, it might be worth, uh, shipping. Like I don't, <laughs> until this thing is free, I don't see it being shipped out anytime soon. If I had unlimited money, this thing would be the white elephant gift. I would choose, I would get it shipped to me because it is absolutely terrifying. It comes with the, some kind of version of square pants. I don't think they're actually square. It's more like the shape of a boat. <laughs> what's that like a half half circle or something i don't know this dude had it looks like this guy has the pointiest hips known to man I, I, that's what it looks like <laughs> it, but it is not square at all it's like if you not, cut a football even, in half you know what the easiest <laughs> shape to create is square <laughs> it's true you could have just put a box and yeah, called it you, good you absolutely could have gotten a big box colored it up Put put some holes in there, and that would have been a, a much better SpongeBob costume. This thing looks like uh, corn on the cob mixed with cheese. Like it's a nightmare. But uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think you can talk them down to to a few bucks <laughs> to get to get it here for White Elephant. That's that really is something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hopefully we've been able to steer people in the right direction. You know, give them some. Uh, creative, get that creative juices flowing and help you guys out for the upcoming white elephant and gift giving season. Uh, it's always, it's always fun to, you know, have a, have a little prank and some of the gifts that Blake has, uh, well, the gifts that Blake gave me last year is, uh, still in my house. So you never know what kind of impact you're going to make. The fish inside of a turkey smoking a cigar? It is still here. Yes. To this day. (laughs) It's always going to stick with me as my only interior decoration in the entire house. Uh, you love you love to see it. I uh, if, if we're done with this, I, I did forget. Uh, I have a special announcement. I have told you, Porter. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I haven't told everybody else. This is uh, a special day for the PM in the AM podcast because we are now officially an award winning podcast. Uh I think it's this, more this, you're an award-winning host. That I'll take that. That's actually much <laughs> better. Yeah, that, that's, I'm an award-winning <laughs> podcast host here. Uh, every every not every year because this was our first year, but uh, my work does. If you've seen the Dundies, uh, for the Office, we have what, what we called the Singies, and uh, obviously, uh, as a very famous, well-renowned podcast, uh, that's what I'm most well known for. And I received an award. <laughs> And I'd like to present it here, live on on air, as uh, the face only a podcast could love award. Uh, <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> yeah, that's why uh, I took myself out of it. <laughs> this is a, this is a really really momentous occasion for the podcast here. Um, I'd like to thank thank our listeners for uh, being along with us, so that we could get to this moment, uh, Porter. Just know that this this is for you as well. You know, I, I wouldn't you. be here without you. So uh, yeah, really special moment though to I to yeah have I this mean here. I I have to uh, say thank you to my favorite uh, natural gas 
diesel engine converting mm. company. Mm. Uh, so yeah, th- thank yeah. you for the uh, notoriety. <laughs> thank you for uh, boosting Blake's spirits and and probably the listens to this podcast by at least ten to fifteen percent. So, I mean, uh, congratulations, Blake. Well deserved award. I, I oh, see some uh, big ones coming in the future. You know, we could be the. 1400th best podcast in nigeria uh next year uh, yeah look we're we're <laughs> we're cranking through the top ten thousands right now <laughs> i mean we're right there in the running so uh hey hey uh mr uh 999 spot you better watch out because we're coming. I, actually, I actually think this is our 99th episode i think actually our next episode wow. will be 100 and so I can't wait to see what you have planned. It's going to be really special. <laughs> I hate that you say that. I can't wait to see what you have planned because uh, that's been our demise recently is is planning. If anybody wants to be a podcast planner, unpaid internship, but looks mm. great on a resume, two yeah. uh, letters Volunteer of recommendation, <laughs> yeah, that will get you places. Straight up, let's post this on Indeed. Let's try and get a, a person to plan our show for us, like content planner. <laughs> I yeah, feel like, I, I mean, feel like that's look, what we need if, right if, now. If somebody's willing to do some volunteer work for free, that's that's great. Because uh, yeah, I mean, don't you know. don't bother with the food pantry. Don't bo- bother no, with the no. uh, Samaritan Santa guys dinging the bell. <laughs> yeah, what we need we need do to something help. that's going to make a difference. You know, there's there's two guys here. I mean, we, we got busy things going on. Obviously, very successful uh, uh, podcasters, and so we don't have time to do the the lowly planning work so if if you're willing to do that for us that'd be that'd be really special i'm sure maybe <laughs> one day there'll be an award coming your way uh, <laughs> it might even be three and a half inches tall <laughs> it's, it's, it's really, we might even crank it up to four for uh, <laughs> it's the thought that counts and, and you know what we'll even throw in four extra large Columbia Blue PM and AM t shirts <laughs> that Look are sitting that. in my closet. <laughs> so don't don't say lightly that you won't get used. <laughs> yeah, lightly, <laughs> gently used by the dust cobwebs of my closet. So uh shout out to everybody who's still listening at this point. Uh yeah, we really <laughs> appreciate it. You got anything else for the listeners this week, Blake? I know it's gonna be a no. busy one. I don't know if if one hundred's gonna get done next week, so you might have to uh listen to ninety nine well, twice. Yeah, I mean the sets we're gonna have to build are gonna take at least a few weeks to uh, to put together. So, I mean, you've told me a little bit about what you have planned. You know, light shows. This, you know, there's lasers, smoke. I mean, it seems really, really elaborate. So, I'm looking forward to seeing it, but it might take a uh, a little bit to get out. So, hopefully, yeah, you're patient were, with us. Those were the initial plans before the uh, budget got cut. Uh, <laughs> now it looks like. It's going to be different. I mean, if you ha- if anybody has any ideas for episode 100, what you want to hear, if you've got a favorite moment from our entire podcast journey, uh, let me know. That was kind of my plan was to try and go back into the archives and chop up little pieces that I thought were like the funniest parts and then just have us uh, go back and revisit some of those moments. The problem was I never organized the files or anything. So it would be a mm. little difficult to do that. So we might just have to like post one as 101 and while I'm working on 100 or something, but <laughs> uh, yeah. our, our 100th episode will be our 101st episode. Uh, for a that's podcast, really special. Hey, man. Nothing ever that, made hey, sense. So why start that's, now? Right. That's, that's PM in the AM if I've ever heard it. That's phenomenal. But yeah, if you, if you do want to help us out with that, um, send us in your favorite, your favorite uh, segments, things that we've done things that made you laugh if you had a certain part of an episode yeah um, if you can at least give us the episode number that would be really helpful um so yeah kind of, if you can kind of go back and look for that if, if you just give us like oh when you guys said this that was funny no shot i'm finding it i'm just gonna <laughs> say that much i mean there's like hundreds of minutes of audio and i named the file like you know like I mean, the episode names are one thing, but the file names are even more stupid. So <laughs> the chances of me ever being able to find anything, very slim, yeah. but I will yeah. try because that's what I was cooking up. So yeah, yeah episode 100 is just going to be, it's going to be a five second song. It's be like, hey, go back and listen to your favorite episode. Yeah, that's we should 100. do. Send us in, send us in voice memos congratulating us. You know, Blake's an award winning host. <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit jealous right now. 
So that's that's what we're gonna do. How about we do that? We ask for voice memos, and mm-hmm. you guys just send us in a little snippet. We'll throw it in the episode. We won't listen to them until the show is going. So try to make it funny, and uh, yeah, oh, that's, I, I, that's I think that's a, a recipe good plan. for disaster. But we'll see how it goes. <laughs> A recipe for disaster. If if we started our podcast over, I think I would change the name from PM and the AM to Recipe for Disaster. I'm yeah, look, it's show one hundred quite quite the time for a rebrand. <laughs> worth <laughs> worth a chance. <laughs> All right, Blake. Well, you got anything else for the listeners this week? No, I think we've uh, we've taken up enough another time. Appreciate them for right. listening, though. Yeah, thanks for tuning in, and we will catch you guys next week. Peace out. Congrats on making it all the way to the end. We hope you enjoyed the show. You are now officially part of the PM and the AM fan base, the morning people, and we are super pumped to have you here. Now that you're a part of the crew, please share the episode with a friend and make sure to check out the rest of our shows and social media content for more hilarious brackets, crazy questions, and an overall great time. Thanks for listening. It truly means a lot to us, and we'll catch you guys next week.